you know, say from the back, or the dear means from the back, we should come forward, there are plenty of seats. That's what our dean says, in the faculty meeting, we do the same thing. <laughs> we go sit in the back, and she wants us to come and occupy the front seats. So, I don't know what's not the good thing about the class being in the back seat. Um, it, it, it's in our blood. <laughs> anyway, so the first unit in nausea, vomiting, also covers the motion sickness, um, which is uh, nausea, vomiting, constipation, and diarrhea. Here, what I would like you to do um, identify the representative, representative class of anti nausea and anti emetic drugs. And the immediate phase, where you those who can prevent the throwing up of the vomit. Classify the drugs into different classes based on their mechanism of action. Then distinguish the chemical structure of the representative drug from each class to which it belongs. So I'm not going to, it will be a, a short lecture, maybe a half hour, uh, then I'll review, we can, I can answer uh, questions if you may have, or if you have any questions from my part in exam one to exam two, mm -hmm. I can uh, take those questions as well. Okay. Drug targets, okay. the, the pharmacology of these receptors have been talked about, then given receptors, fire HCP3, serotonin receptors, dopamine receptors, cannabinoid receptors, histamine receptors. Um, the, the drugs belong to, in most cases, these are antagonists of the respective receptors. The H1 receptor M123 receptors antagonists, such as metrogene, cytogene, promethazine, or antiemetics. Whereas D2, H1 and M3 receptor antagonists such as phenothazine, uh, promethazine, and prochlorothalazine, and metoclopramide, these are the antagonists of D2, H1, M3 receptors. Another class of uh, drugs, 5-HT3 receptor antagonists such as antemceptron. But the next receptor, um, these are agonists of CD1 receptors. You may have heard about cannabinoid receptors. Cannabinoid, I didn't see the pharmacology or pathophysiology of uh, the uh, cannabinoid uh, receptors in nausea vomiting. They, they can act as antiphemetics. These are agonists. Make that distinction where the previous classes of there of antagonists, only exception is cannabinoid receptor. Cannabinoid receptor agonists act as antiemetics. One of the examples drawn up now. However, this there is a controversy whether this is a controlled substance or not controlled substance. Even within the US, there are states saying that no, you can uh, prescribe drugs. But there they are analgesics and they stimulate appetite and therefore the drug now was introduced able to treat HIV patients in early 90s because it stimulates appetite. Also in cancer patients, it was kind of a uh, home discovery. These agonists can prevent the vomiting sensation in when the patient is going through chemotherapy. So if uh, the cancer patient doesn't get any relief from these antagonists, the previous class antagonists, then the patient will be put into the cannabinoid receptor agonist dronabinol. So that is a refractive uh, treatment because it, they, they, the patient is not getting relief, so they will put the uh, patient in with the uh, cannabinoid Bromabinol is a Schedule 1 
schedule five or two, three, five, so which one do you think Jordan Binal belongs to? And what's the alternate name for Jordan Binal? Yeah. Never know, yes. The clinical name. <laughs> it's Delta 8 tetrahydrocannabinol. The Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, is controlled substance. It is a psychotic, and you don't get prescriptions for that. But the dronabinol is a Delta 8 THC. What happens is it goes in like a pro drug and gets metabolized to delta-9 THC inside the body, then it can elicit all the anti-emetic. Along with it, there may be psychotic activity. That's how our basketball player or person, <coughs> she got into trouble. Dronabinol is extracted from hemp plant, and therefore it is not marijuana. So the hemp oil is the one she had it in the bag, when she checked in, when they uh, accused her of kind of using controlled substance. They say dronabinol is not most federally, it is not a uh, schedule one drug. It is not controlled. Therefore, federally it is accepted, but states have their own, some states have their own rule, they restrict. But this person didn't know, Russia doesn't allow, doesn't know about this, probably distinction between delta-9 THC, delta-8 THC, so they put her in jail. So it is an unfair treatment for our um, now basketball player. Anyway, it's, uh, so these, only the agonists of this receptor, uh, they act like an, an anti The dronambinol is the delta-8 THC? Yes. <laughs> Alternate, its alternate name is Delta 8 THC. Yeah. I'm sure these um, classes have been covered. They are pharmacology, they are streaming antagonists, methadone, cyclidine, promethazine. Dopamine antagonist, phenotizing, um, metoclopamide, then serotonin antagonist, uh, and then cephron, then NK1 receptor antagonist, every pigment, and all of the pigment. These have been covered, and I'm going to try give you the chemistry part of these uh, respective drugs. So the um, cyclidine and the methylidine belong to the class of hyperazine. These are histamine antagonists, and they have a hyperazine um, ring structures, and they have some variations in the substitution where R1 and R2 are modified to give you cyclozine and methylzine. In case of cyclozine, the R1 here is just an its atom, Whereas the R2 is substituted with a Whereas in methylazine, the R1 is, is a chloride. And then the R2 is a methyl benzene. So added a methyl benzene increase its um, uh, hydrophobicity. Increase its aromat aromaticity, become more aromatic. These two have been widely used to treat motion sickness, nausea, vomiting, because of their central effects mediated via H1 receptor. By putting this um, dimethyl, um, this in R2, they probably increase its uh, hyperphobicity, as I said, it will. It can cause the respiratory death. Another class of uh, histamine antagonists, but these are tricyclics. Remember tricyclic H1 antihistamines? They have three ring structures. 
and there is a S atom in it, and it is the S enantiomers. So it is a mixture of R and R and S. So it is a racemic mixture, and it is an anti-emetic. Of course, it is the most effective agent for treatment of motion sickness. Again, it, it makes it more specific to H1 receptors, tricyclic nature. Then there are tricyclic compounds, which are B2 receptors. And they are the, for example, phenothiazine. Phenothiazine is a benzodiazine uh, type 1 compound. And there are other um, examples, propylene, they are all related to the tricyclic uh, compound. There is an exception here, metochromide. It is not a tricyclic, but it acts through, apart from the dopamine receptors, it blocks phylogenetic T4 and may sensitize M3 receptors of the muscle. See, the metochromide doesn't have a tricyclic. Um, um, nature, a three ring structure, but it is a para amino benzoic acid derivative. So, this is the if you have COOH and NH2, it is a para amino benzoic acid with uh, other substitutions to the carboxyl group, uh, they made this compound. And uh, it's very effective in uh, treating nausea, vomiting. And how does it act? It acts by increasing the DI motility. And also, there are some say it increases the LES tone. Remember the LES lower esophageal sphincter? Uh, you have come across on it in GERD. When people talk about GERD, the reflux, because of the LES tone, it, it, it becomes weaker, then the um, reflux of acid reflux occurs. It is at the lower end of the esophageal, um, that's where it, it acts like a flap. It closes the stomach acid from coming back to the mouth. So that is by increasing the tone of the LES, it makes it a tight link. So it would not allow the vomit to come out. So that is, this compound increases the LES tone, thereby contains the vomit within the stomach. It won't allow it to come out. That's another a mechanism of action for metal and the next class is serotonin receptor antagonists. And there, on the citron, on the citron, zopran is the 5-HT3 specific or preferential to 5-HT3 receptors. It is modified from cocaine structure. And these compounds, this compound belongs to um, a group of keto compounds because of the carbonyl nature present in this um, carbonyl groups. This will make the ketone function groups. Uh, some of the now newer drugs in this group are granisetron, dolcetron, and uh, they all belong to this class. The ARI hyperlipidine. In on the encephron, what they did, they left this imidazole group at the terminal, and that will, it is a heterocyclic uh, amine, and the being there, it can make the specific to 5-HT3 receptors. Now we have NK1 receptor antagonists. We 
these are uh, the neurokinin 1 receptor antagonists. Uh, they are shown to inhibit uh, vomit via central pathway. Uh, these NK1 substance, the NK1 receptors are essentially located. And the examples are atriptan and rolapitan. These are active drugs. They're coming from the posapitan, which is a prodrug. So you take this posapitan, well, I'm sorry, posapitan, it um, becomes atriptan, the active drug. So and they undergo metabolism to give you the product a free patent and then okay, you don't need to know this uh, long uh, complex layer this is a name I just say this is a free patent uh, is the active drug of post out free patent and you don't need to know what modifications it undergoes uh, just know the uh, name then the Lactose stays in the system and it uh, 
that becomes a non-absorbable carbohydrate. Therefore, it can relieve constipation condition. The opposite of constipation is diarrhea. Then diarrhea can be treated with any bulk forming hydroscopic agents, uh, carboxyl methylcellulose, calcium, folate, carbophil, etc. But the effective treatment is from the OPI derivative of glutaramide, imodium. And then the others, diphenoxylate and diphenoxin. For diphenoxin, diphenoxylate is the prodrug which gets metabolized through diphenoxin becomes the active drug. I have highlighted in the bottom. Now, opioids have inherent abuse potential. So the loperamide was a slight variation of opioid structure by um, making this butyrile group in here, butyrylamide group, it makes the compound, uh, cannot make the compound inaccessible to brain because it cannot pass free blood, blood brain barrier, like morphine. Well, morphine can pass through blood brain barrier, whereas this one cannot because of the butyrylamide uh, derivation or functional. Therefore, it can treat more uh, effective in treating diarrhea than the counterpart di uh, the hypophenoxylate is PH, is not PE. So diphenoxylate is a phenyl hyperdine derivative and it is a prodrug and is rapidly metabolized to diphenoxin and that is the one acting preventing the uh, diarrhea by binding to the new receptors of the peripheral, um, not in the center. So this has less abuse potential because it does not cross, cross, cross the blood brain barrier, unlike a morphine. But we do have, uh, I'm going to pick on your brain a little bit on this slide. We do have natural opioids in our system. Um, what are those natural opioids? Anyone? I know in biochem we didn't touch on this, but if you come across any of the natural opioids in your one, two, three. Yeah, more. Uh, Amu, Delta, and... I'm sorry? She's saying mu. Mu. That's a mu receptor. That's receptor. But what are the agonists, natural agonists, opioids, oh, our you? body synthesizes? Our body synthesizes natural agonists, opioid-like uh, molecules, which can bind to all three, four, Delta, Kappa, our mu receptors. Sorry, I'm going to subtract. These are naturally occurring opioids. Can we get relief if they are? We have opioid, naturally occurring opioids. Can we get relief? They can control diarrhea conditions, can they? Because they will induce constipation. Is the other end of the spectrum. So what are these naturally occurring opioids? You heard of these encephalins, endorphins? These are the naturally occurring opioids. Of course, they are peptides. These are peptide agonists. They bind to opioid receptors 
and they induce the same whatever the morphine induces. There can be analgesics, they can be painkillers, and if we increase these okay, natural opioids, we can control diarrhea. That was the logic, so logic behind these peptides. Encephalins are proteal, however, their action is short-lived because these are peptides. What, have, what happens to your peptide? It gets proteolytic cleaved by enzymes in our system. So therefore, these encephalins, endorphins are produced, but they are transiently act on these respective receptors. They produce the analgesic effects, painkiller effects, and they are gone because of the enzyme encephalinase. So if we design a drug to inhibit this encephalinase, we can increase the durability of these encephalins. They stay longer and they give you give the um, give uh, they can control the diarrhea. In Europe, they have these uh, drugs which are encephalinase inhibitors, but in the US they are not approved for clinical treatment. So by inhibiting this enzyme activity, one can control diarrhea by increasing these natural products of opioids stay there for longer time period so that they can bind to new receptors. These are acetorphin. It is a prodrug of thiorphin. So, Thiorphine is a thiol group and encephalinase, they have a zinc molecule in their active site. Remember the chelation. It is the other way around. So instead of the antacid, um, the, the divalent cations coming in bind to uh, the, the So the 
is proline caplin. These are small peptides. Um, two kinds of uh, n caplins are there. And whereas the endorphins, they are even longer. They are uh, 16 months. We say 16 amino acids contain peptides. You don't need to know any of this details, but the endorphins are the ones um, protecting these animals from pain effects. So the marathoners, they will uh, start producing endorphins and that they will not feed the pain to some extent. Okay, I'm not saying they'll out of everyone, anybody on the marathon, ran marathon before or planning on running. Um, you will know what I'm talking about. I, I have done several uh, Houston marathons, and I know if the 20 miler, you say that if you hit the wall, that's exactly true. When you're coming back on the, the uh, what is that, uh, the Allen Parkway, where it passes through, that is, that is the 20 mile marker. You, you feel like, oh my God, I, I'm going to stop. Run. So that's how you feel, and there your endorphins and caplins will protect you from that pain and make you run. Okay. So by avoiding their degradation, um, you by inhibiting the enzymes, the proteolytic enzymes, you can provide relief uh, for these patients' diarrhea. Yeah. 